Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 3rd of September 2011. Yesterday we had a spectacular coronal mass ejection off of the southeast limb. It travelled away from the sun at about 400 kilometres per second. But more on that later. First, our trivia question for today. 25 years ago this day, Viking 2 landed on Mars. There were two parts to the Viking 2 program, the lander and the orbiter. Today's trivia question is, which of them lasted the longer? The answer will be given at the end. The sun has only produced two sea flares since yesterday, but the X-ray background has continued to increase over that time period. So let's take a look and see what's going on. We have six officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment, plus three as yet unnumbered regions. Let's take a look at each in turn and see how it has changed since yesterday. Well, let's start with region 1280 near the west limb. Here's what it looked like yesterday with three fairly robust spots. And here's what it looks like today. Those spots seem to have decreased in size. However, you have to be a little careful here because it's approaching the limb. The spots will appear smaller just because of foreshortening. Yesterday I mentioned there was a region just growing to the north of 1280. And overnight it's grown quite spectacularly. However, of course, we're going to lose it in the next day or so, so it's not going to contribute very much to solar activity in general. When you look at the equivalent magnetogram, you can see that these are clearly two separate regions, so it can't be confused with region 1210. So I can't think for the life of me why NOAA hasn't numbered this as a new region. Next we'll move on to region 1277. Yesterday it looked like a large unipolar spot and today it's very much the same sort of thing. It may be showing some signs of breaking up though. Next 1279 to its south and east. Now yesterday we were wondering whether this region was either growing or breaking up. And based on today's images I think it's breaking up. The spots are smaller and weaker. It is not necessarily surprising to see the death of a large sunspot like this. The differential rotation of the sun causes these spots to be ripped apart. In fact, the surprising thing is that they stay together for so long. The last part of this complex is region 1282. Yesterday it had grown into quite a magnificent region. However, today it seems to have decayed quite significantly, particularly in the trailing part of the region, and many of the spots between the leader and the trailer have disappeared. I wonder if it is coincidence that all three of these regions seem to be decaying at exactly the same time. Region 1283 in the northeast has somewhat of a Jekyll and Hyde character to it. Some parts of the region have grown, while other parts have decayed. I commented on region 1281 yesterday that the penumbra around the leading spot seemed to be very extensive, and in fact unusually so. However, today it looks far less so, so it's de obviously decayed somewhat. Also, the satellite spots to its west and south seem to have decayed away. We have an as yet unnumbered region coming over the southwest limb. The spots look fairly substantial, so this might be an interesting region to keep an eye on. So overall, the sun clearly can't make up its mind whether it wants to start becoming more active or to quiet down yet further. But here is a new view that I've not shown you before. This is an image of the far side of the Sun taken through the Sun using a technique called helioseismology. Helioseismology uses sound waves in the same way that a sonogram can image a fetus in the womb. Uh, and so these sound waves propagate around the Sun and are interfered with by sunspots. By measuring that interference we can tell where there are sunspots. Now the resolution isn't very good, but we can see at least three major regions on the back side of the Sun. Why don't you take a look at some of the older Sun Today videos uh, from a couple of weeks ago and see if you can identify which of these regions they are and whether any of them are new. Finally, let's take a look at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the sunspot and the magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Choose your favorite region and see how it evolved over this last 48 hours. If you want to look at more than one region, stop the video and rerun through it several times. Again, you may want to go into full screen mode to see the details. Unfortunately, there are large gaps in both the transition region and the low temperature coronal movies from the AIA instrument, so I'll just show them to you for completeness, but they're not very useful for today's video. The latest high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see that there's a new region coming over the northeast limb. Now let's take a look at that coronal mass ejection off the southeast limb. It's absolutely spectacular, isn't it? And if you look carefully, there are two smaller coronal mass ejections off the northwest limb. So the sun from a coronal mass ejection point of view is being quite active at the moment. The solar wind parameters as measured by the ACE spacecraft 
all took a fairly major jump just a few hours ago. It's possible that we're beginning to see the influence of that coronal hole that I mentioned a couple of days ago. The high energy electron flux took a major nosedive in the last 24 hours and we still had no uh, proton events in that time frame. The auroral zone is looking a little bit more active than it did yesterday and the KP index uh, reached a level of 3 at least for a short period. So in summary then the x-ray background is at the B5 level, the sunspot number is at 103, the radio sun intensity is at 108 solar flux units, solar wind speed has increased to 385 kilometers per second with a density of about 4 protons per cubic centimeter but geospace conditions are still rated as quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is similar to yesterday's in that I think C flares are likely, we have a possibility of M flares but I think the chance of getting X flares is quite remote. The sunspot number should remain relatively high, we still have a good chance of getting coronal mass ejections. Solar wind speed should be increasing, the solar wind speed should be increasing but our chances of getting a major geomagnetic storm is very unlikely. If we look at the composite coronal image we see there are no major regions due back for another 3 or 4 days. If you want to find out more about what's happening on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun today, or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to subscribe, you'll be more than welcome to do so. So the answer to the trivia question. The answer is that the lander lasted longer than the orbiter, which I find quite surprising. Uh, the lander lasted until 1980, whereas the orbiter was turned off in 1978. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.